Well, we got him back on the road. He got some fairly serious damage. On and trust me, I had the thought of, you know, I don't have to make this video. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized, like, I have no problem calling out other companies, like especially on the sponsor side of things, when they send me inferior products or they don't hold up to what they say. Um, I, I hold them accountable, so it's only fair that when I screw up, I hold myself accountable. So I'm gonna keep interrupting this video as we go through and explaining what I'm doing wrong, not why I'm doing it wrong, because there's no good reason, but what I'm doing wrong, what I'm seeing in the video that I should have been doing different at the time. And we'll just kind of go through this together and uh, see how bad I am at this. Well, good evening. Grumpy is here and uh, we're in the big truck. We're headed out to go get uh, a kid called me. I guess he slid off the road in a F-250, F-350, something like that. And did you see the video uh, where that guy slid off the road as I was heading out for another job right in front of me? So I just stopped and pulled him out while I was there. He's over the bank in a tree. The Nissan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He was still climbing out of his car and I pulled up. Yeah, the same spot. The exact same spot. So this that is, must be a nice slick spot. Yeah, so this is gonna be the deja vu run. And uh, we're taking the big truck because we're not sure if it needs to be towed or not. And it's a full size, like I said, F-250, F-350. So it's a bit heavy for my little wrecker, especially with the single tires on the back. So we'll just take this one. Um, the backstory on this is much earlier in the day, a couple of kids were driving out to the river Others hiking trails, waterfalls, fishing holes, all that stuff out there. Anyway, they were headed out there, got a little too close to the edge of the road, hit the snowy shoulder, and it just pulled them off the road over and down the bank in the exact same spot that I had pulled the guy out of about four or five days earlier. And uh, they got really lucky and hit a couple of trees that stopped them from tumbling all the way to the bottom. It's a really nasty drop like there and they're really lucky they stopped where they did. Now after that happened, they made sure they're okay all that. They called their insurance company who sent out a tow company to go um, uh, pull the truck back up onto the road and get it out of there. And the uh, tow company went out there, looked at it, said they wouldn't do it. It was too icy, too slick. And, and earlier in the day, that road was still covered in a good bit of snow and ice. Uh, that warm rain that came in that evening took a lot of it away as we were out there. But uh, yeah, another tow company had gone out there said no so everybody left sheriff left um, they went home called around got a hold of me so i went back out there to recover the truck and a uh, huge thanks to uh, deschutes county sheriffs for a uh, deputy coming back out and helping with traffic control uh, that night so that's a big thank you to those guys they're always really helpful but uh, we're going to go through this video a little more like i said i'm going to keep interrupting here and uh, talk about all the stupid mistakes i made on this and how it led to uh me dragging someone's pickup into the corner of my rollback bed. Uh, we're pulling up on the side down, and currently we're going to need traffic control, so they're here waiting for us. And I think that's the owner, probably on the other side there. And where is the vehicle? Uh, down around the turn right here. Right in front of the sheriff. Now up a little ways. Right here. Right there. Yep. Oh man, he's buried down in there a lot farther than that other guy. Yeah. All the... Uh... Oh. Spin around. You gonna turn around? Yep. How far you gotta go to... Oh, right, right there. there. Now, why didn't I take this truck? It's because... The rig we were going to get in, I didn't know if it needed to be towed away or if it could drive away. I currently have the single tires on the back of this uh, so that I could chain up with actual chains. And uh, those are not weight rated for a full size pickup on the back of this thing. And I would have been overloaded on my tires. But I should have just taken it anyway. The tires were not gonna blow. They would have held up just fine. Yeah, they'd have been overloaded for five, six miles, whatever, big deal but I, uh, I did not. So if you're wondering why I just have the singles on instead of duels, uh, these narrow, small tires with a lot of weight on them uh, grip the ice a whole lot better than duels do. And I needed to chain up with actual steel chains that I have right here. Uh, I have the auto socks for this truck that I can run with the duels on and they work great on icy roads. 
but I needed to go up into the desert and rock and tree stumps and snow and all that, and I wanted actual chains, so I didn't tear up those auto socks, so I took the duals back off. Uh, that's why it was in this configuration right now, which is why I didn't want to take this one. How are you doing? Hey, I just pulled someone out of these exact same trees. <laughs> I saw the picture. Yeah, yeah, he was, I think he was on that tree. I think you made it one more tree down. There you go. He's against the tree there. You can hold that. You want that to... Yeah. No, I don't need that. I got my light. Okay. I'll go look at what we got. Oh, well, he got his door pretty good right there. That sucks. It's in the, the pillar and the door, not just the door. So, oh, and that fender is pretty crunched. I think it's drivable though. Suspension wise looks good. Tires got air. Got the door and the pillar pretty good. Yeah. All right, well, I'll uh, hook onto stuff. Yeah. I'm hook onto stuff. That's like what that. he says. That's what I would expect. He says that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do? He hooks onto stuff. Oh, yeah. Got a receiver? Receiver into the uh, front end. I want to pull it straight sideways so we don't do any more damage from the tree. Okay. So how are you going to rig this? Uh, we're going to go off that corner of the bed. For the front? I'm going to put a snatch block in the center so that my cable goes center and then over and winds on the winch good. So you're going to hook to the back also? Yeah. Okay. With with this truck, I don't think we need to snatch block back off of it. This thing's got enough power, it can single line it. Okay. Okay. I think we're actually going to move this to that. Well, we'll just flip it and leave it right here for now. So I'm pulling up more. Okay. And then once we get closer, we'll move it over here so that I can pull it onto the road. Now, one of the main reasons I should not have taken this truck is uh, I did not have the sheave head for the back of it yet. So I was just snatch blocking through the chain pockets and uh, pulling a snatch block, which was running the cable over the edge of the bed rail. Totally not correct, but it's one of those things you get away with, so you do. The killer thing about all this is while all this was happening, sitting at the UPS store waiting for me to pick it up, I just didn't know it, was the sheave head attachment. This is what I've been waiting for for this truck. This is the sheave head attachment. It clamps onto the end of the bed here and has a big collar that goes through this uh, reinforced plate in the bed here, pins on the bottom allows you to pull in any direction just like the boom heads on the wrecker while feeding the cable straight into the winch uh, then this is also you can undo these pins lace the cable out of here and it comes out and then uh, that can go back in one of the storage boxes but without this which is the proper way to side pull out the back of this truck i should have taken that one it'll be nice if that rain goes ahead and like doesn't come pouring down just yet miracles. We try. Watch your cable. You're clear of the tree. So what you're gonna see here, aside from Grumpy's flashlight, is that the truck starts rolling backwards, which causes it to turn the back end up towards me instead of sliding straight sideways like I thought it was gonna do. Uh, I did ask if it was in four-wheel drive. They said, yeah, uh, it was not, and I didn't verify that, which was 100% my fault. Uh, the customer, obviously, being in an accident, 
their thought is make sure we're okay, get out of the vehicle, and uh, not what configuration they're leaving it in for the tow truck driver. So I should have verified that it was in four wheel drive with the parking brake set. It was not, it was in two wheel drive with uh, no parking brake set. So it was not wanting to stay in place and slide. It was wanting to roll, which just even further kind of set me up for failure as you can see. Okay, here's what we will do then. If it doesn't want to stay there, we'll chain it there. The other problem I had is this thing is so much taller than the Honda I pulled up this same bank the other day with the wrecker that once it was off the trees that were holding it up, it was wanting to roll over if the winch line was released. So I needed to get it all the way up to where the tires rolled over onto the edge of the road to level out, out some uh, before I could back off the winch to reposition the truck or do anything like that. What I should have done was put a snatch block in the center of the bed there to hold the cable straight, then ran it to this corner, not that one like I did, and uh, snatch blocked off of here, down over the bank, and then set with this truck three, four feet off the edge of the shoulder with this corner of the bed so that I had room to pull that truck up over and get it sitting part way on the road, then move my whole truck over and bring it the rest of the way up. But instead, in this part, what I did was I put the truck as close as I could over to the edge of the bank to try to help that angle as much as possible, which is completely unnecessary with as powerful of a winch as this truck had pulling at a downward angle into the bank, increasing resistance on the load coming up, this truck wouldn't have noticed it one bit. I, there was no need to do that, and all that did was set me up for failure, because then when I got the pickup up to the top of the slope, I couldn't get it over onto the slope enough, or the road enough to hold still, while I backed off the winch line and moved my truck over. So I got all the way to the top, and I had no way for it to stay there uh, while I moved the truck forward. This was a complete setup failure on my part, and now looking back at this video, of course, I'm looking at this just wanting to slap myself in the face because rookie move as it gets of leaving myself no room to actually do the recovery. Okay. See, this thing's like drivable just fine. So the wrecker would have been the way better truck for the job. But if I would have brought the wrecker, like the then it wouldn't have run. would have been broke or something. And then this would have been what I needed. So this is where I'm trying to back off the winch and get it to just sit still somewhere so I can unhook and move my truck over and realize that it ain't happening and I have screwed myself. And uh, Careful, decisions only go downhill from here. So this is where I went and grabbed another chain, uh, tied off to a stake pocket here, went to the back of the truck so that I could slack everything off and it would sit still while I reconfigured some other stuff down there. Mistake again. I did not put a binder in that chain. Uh, you don't need the binder to tighten the chain, you need the binder to be able to loosen the chain if it happens to go tight when you don't want it to. I know better than to do that. I didn't do that. Another mistake. Now here's where I make the major mistake of getting in the truck and pulling forward to pull the pickup off enough onto the road where it would sit, thinking that was my only option out of this when I probably could have figured something else out and looking at the angle of the chains I thought it would move away from me a little bit and we'd gain some distance 
But as you'll see, between the ice and the slick road Whoa. and the angle of the chains, it pulled us right together and uh, oh, right into the side of the truck. Not good. Oops. That was 100% my fault. So now the issue is uh, we are up against each other. I'm pushed into the corner of his bed and that lower chain down there that I put as a safety is now completely tight and I can't get it apart. Uh, since this video, I have put a, a grinder with a cutoff wheel in my truck toolbox so that if I get in this situation again, I can cut that chain and uh, not have to damage the customer's truck even more to make the chain loose enough so that we can get apart. Because at this point, the only way to get that chain off was to make it loose. And the only way to make it loose was to just dig into it a little bit harder and pull him even farther into me. I, I don't like watching this part. Okay. I'm normally way better at this. Yeah, it's up enough on the road now we can. Yeah. I'm going to pull forward and back on the road. Okay. You got the beach going? Oh, they're in it. Yeah. 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 How bad the door damage? Sorry? How bad the door damage? The door's all right, just his front fender. Front fender, not the door. And then back, back door of the cab. Back door is pretty well done in. Uh, well, we got him back on the road. We got some fairly serious damage on the other side. Or he slid into a tree. Yeah, okay. Uh, I felt okay. Right now it's in four high, so it wants to grab a little bit on the asphalt, but I think it felt fine. Clear to two wheel drive every second. What I'm going to do is after he's done, I'm just going to sort of back down to the car. Is, there's a place around. right up there to turn around. See, that, that, oh, is there, is see there? that crossroads and it's clear? Yeah. We turned the truck around. Got it. Okay. Yeah, the front end was against that one up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the tree you were against over there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Look how much further that tree saved you from going down. Yeah. A tree saved two kids' lives is what it did. Hey. 
That's what's important. Absolutely. You were our rock star. I'll take care of it. Thank you, brother. How much do I owe you? Nothing for this. Uh, dude, seriously. I screwed up your truck. Oh, please. We saved our bacon. I screwed totally up. We saved our bacon. True. That's true. <laughs> but I screwed up your truck. You ain't no for it. Uh, no. Dude, you're the man. No, and let me know how much that is. I'll take care of it. I'm going to take care of you. I'll, I'll take, take care of that. I'll take care of you. Okay. Have a safe trip. Be careful. You guys are awesome. Thank you yeah. so much. No problem. Yeah. You guys are alright? Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, well, you guys are good. You have my number. Save that so that we do. What, you don't think I could open my own door anymore? It's not a think thing, it's a no thing. <laughs> okay, well there goes everyone headed home. Unfortunately, in this case, his truck looks worse after the recovery than it did before. Well, not really. Oh, really? It's it's. Not, not, not if you saw the other side. Of the well, the problem is this side was good. No, I, no, was I a, messed up the good side. There was a dent down in front of the fender. Yeah, I saw that, but so, still, anyway, the, the bed had a dent in it already, but I put another one in it, and uh, I'm, actually, I'm very upset about that right now. Truck slid over. Yeah, because I pulled it over. It didn't do it on its own. No, this truck slid over. Yeah, everything slid every which way until they went... Yeah, until they backed yeah. up. And it was a bad kiss. This is the perfect time to say, I never said I was good at this. And you can get your I never said I was good at this t-shirts in the link down below so that I can hopefully have a few extra dollars to buy that guy a new bedside. <laughs> So this is just complete amateur hour from the beginning and I did a lot of things wrong. But the, the worst part is I have done all of those incorrect things multiple times in the past and gotten away with it, which leads you to think that taking a shortcut here, taking a shortcut there is just fine because you've gotten away with it so many times in the past. But in this case, I took enough of those shortcuts and made enough of those wrong decisions in a row that uh, it all added up to me screwing up and damaging a customer's vehicle for the first time in the history of Cascade Heavy Rescue. And I'm not okay with that. So uh, it's a good lesson to learn that uh, shortcuts aren't worth it no matter how many times you have gotten away with it. Think about what you're doing twice before you do it. That's actually one thing that's kind of handy about this whole YouTube camera thing is a lot of times when I'm talking to the camera explaining what I'm doing, I'm also talking to myself, kind of taking a second look at what I'm doing before I do it. So this has actually been really good for that because it kind of forces me when I'm explaining it to you guys to also be explaining it to myself and uh, making sure that it makes sense in my head. And I didn't do that this time and uh, made the wrong moves and now I get to buy a bedside. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that video. I didn't. but. Uh, it is what it is, and all we can do at this point is pay for the mistakes, learn from it, move on, and try not to make those mistakes again. So, that's going to be it for this one. We'll see you guys next time. And I've been thinking long and hard about this the whole drive home. I figured out why I did that. Did I say I never said I was good at this? Right. And a whole lot of people have been calling me out going, I think you are good at this. So I had to screw one up. <laughs> to prove that I am not good at this. So that was, that was totally intentional just to keep my reputation up. Yeah, right. <laughs>